Hey, Alright guys, so this is what I'm getting here. Eight, and I put four, eight, one, eight. <coughs> I checked this here, so I'm like comparing that one. Whatever. It was close enough. Yeah, no, it was. It was <laughs> real rough to get the same answer. Trust me, uh, on the test, all it takes is one little flipping of two numbers or something and it throws it off a little bit. I'm not going to worry too much about that. I can only catch a big thing. If you come up and show me your scatter plot, I'm like, something went wrong, and I look real quick. I'm like, right there. Not a big deal. So don't overstress about, oh my God, if I put a three instead of a two, the whole thing is going to be wrong. No, it's not true. I, uh, I'll give you all the points. That's understandable. In putting all this data, you got to put something in wrong somewhere. Um, okay. Sure. Everybody got something like this? Yeah. Right here, no? Anybody need help? Everybody's good? <laughs> so how do I plot this? I don't know. It's pretty. Now let me show you something. On the, on the new um, calculators, you can actually request it to store the equation. I didn't point this out yesterday because I kind of wanted you guys to have to write the equation. <coughs> I still want you to. I'm going to ask you this. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll point that out. You can play with that if you want to. I, I'm not going to at the moment. So if we write the equation down for ourselves. We got point eight oh eight. We got that equation. I like it. What's the y-intercept? Um, cents. So what does that mean? People starting to pay. Yeah. That's if you had a state where there was 0% with above a bachelor's degree or bachelor's degree rhetoric, that would be the expected average income for that state. That's with that, the interpretation of it, physically. Uh, we had a question that kept going past Francisco. Oh, yeah. Um, how did you uh, put your points in the list for the, for the percentages? Say again? How did you put your points in the list for the percentages? Oh, okay. I just put them in as is. Oh, okay. We're creating this equation. So this is one place we can create a, an equation that understands percentages. Now, if you put in there 0 0.308, 0 0.346, did anybody do that? <laughs> did any, nobody did that? Awesome. I thought I heard a few people saying they were going to do that. If you did that, then your numbers in your equation, they'd be the same numbers, just the decimal be moved over. Right for your slope. Okay. If anybody happened to do that and doesn't want to say it for some weird reason, then that's what you would happen. Is your, your slope would be different. Now all your inputs would be one hundredth as big, so your slope has to be one hundred times bigger to make up for that. That's all. <coughs> so like in the homework, when they say I have years and some other data, do you have to put 1989, 1990? No, you could put 89, 90. You'll have, an, you'll have a different equation than somebody else, but they'll make the same predictions. Right? You're building your equation based on the variable looking like this versus that. This is something that students really have trouble understanding, but it's, if I make assumptions about how I build my equation, what I put in, then I have to put it in in that form when I put something in for x. The output's going to be the same. Just the input's going to look different based on how I chose to make it. All right, let's move past that. So everybody did this <laughs> according to what you told me. I don't believe it, but that's all right. Um, so I told you here, R had to be greater than 0.482 for the sample size. And obviously, we got past that. So what does that by itself mean? RR is bigger than 0.482. That's evidence for correlation. Period. If it's greater than 0.482, that's evidence of correlation. We got up to 0.8. So that's evidence of relatively strong. You like it? Decently strong, just like yesterday. And again, like I told you, on a test where you're kind of by yourself, I'm going to make it really extreme. Like, 
0.95 or 0.49, let's say really weak 0.49 or 0.95 would be really strong. You know. Yes? Would it be wrong if you said it was average? Would it not like the I know what you mean. It's middle. I, I, I would understand what you mean. Yeah. It's the stats part of it. like, oh, but no, I understand what you mean. Okay, okay, okay. So interpret R. This is strong positive correlation. Why does that make sense? Why is this study semi-silly? We're studying what? The, how the percentage of people with a higher degree <coughs> corresponds to the salary of, let's say, so you would expect people have higher and higher and higher degrees. They're probably getting jobs that pay more, for one thing, so that they could pay back all their loans. I graduated from grad school with $32,000 of loans to pay. Yay! I remember the day that I did my last check, and I'm like, oh. Oh, my God. $32,000. Careful. Just get ready for that. Careful. Careful. Oh. Now guys, what does this R tell us about the line of S fit? Okay, let's get over that, sorry. Gave a little too much personal information. What does this tell us about the line of S fit? Where you said that? What's it tell us about the line of S fit? The correlation with uh the percentage of bachelors. Would we trust the line to make predictions? That's yes. one thing you could say. You could say the boring shit like it's got a positive slope, right? R is not equal to the slope. I really want you, in case anybody thought there is a relationship between the two, but it's definitely not that they're equal to each other. No way. But if R is positive, then the slope is positive. If R is negative, the slope would be negative. Yes. Not relatively positive. That's <coughs> that's an interesting phrase. <coughs> relatively strong positive? Yes. It's definitely positive. There's no but if you that, that's relative about it. Yes. Really. Uh, so what's the the line? You could say one thing you could say is it's got positive slope. That's kind of boring. <laughs> Better thing you can say is yeah. If you want to go to the boring house, but uh, we trust the line to make predictions. Um, so not, oh sorry, what's up? Quick question. What if uh, for our R, if it was like 24, 68, 9, or 0.5, so then what do we do? All right, so let me give you the whole story, you ready? <laughs> if R was less than, <coughs> if R was less than 0 0.482, what that means is, in, in fact, before we talk about this chapter at all, what would be your best guess for some random state's average salary? It would be the average that we see in the sample. I take the average of all those salaries, and that's my best guess for anybody. And that guess, of course, really sucks in general. It's the, the, each individual state can vary from it quite a bit, but that's my best guess. So what does this chapter do? It gives us a way to make a better guess per state based on some characteristic of that state. So what am I going to trust my line to make a better prediction than just the average when my R is big enough? Period. So even if it was if our, if our R was 0.49, I would still trust the line to make predictions. It would make a better prediction than just saying the average. If it's below 0.482, I can just use the average. That's still my best guess. Because the R being less than 0.482 would mean I can't use it to make predictions. It's not strong enough. Just use the average then. That's your best guess still. I like it. But of course, the closer R is to 1, the better that prediction gets. But when do I trust to make predictions, period, when it's bigger than that required R? <coughs> If 
0.4821, I would still use the line. 0.4819, I would just use the average. The average would be my answer to any prediction statement. But here, we got way up there. We're going to use the line. So on this next statement, predict the median income for a state with 34.6% of its population with a bachelor's. So the way I would do that, and by the way, the book does this, which is good. I, I always forget to say something about this. If I plug an X in here, am I going to definitely get this number? Like if I put 34.6, no. am I going to definitely get that number? No. no. So that's why they put a little hat on it. You'll notice that in the book. Because it's not the real Y. It's an approximate Y. I just want to make that distinction. Sort of like P hat is not the real P. It's an approximate P. That little hat thing does that. It doesn't mean that if you're wearing a hat, you're an approximate person. But yes. Um, I like that. Are you going to cover like Rome and have it actually do that? No, we're not like, going to cover that. But I think the book gets into that a it, bit. It really talks about it. Doesn't really show it in more detail. Not really. Uh, yeah. Because again, that's more of a. Anyway, yeah, we're not going to get into that. Yeah. So what's my prediction then for 34.6? So the, may, the way I made my equation, I'm going to just put 34.6 in here. Mm -hmm. If you made your equation based off of decimals for these, then you better put a decimal in. Mm -hmm. now, of course, you could always also, like I showed you yesterday, just do second calc value. Oh, shit, if I put the freaking equation in there. Yeah, sure. All right, let's put the right equation here. Here we go, 1140.4x. Okay, there it is. So there's what it should look like. This is what I'm going to need to see from you uh, during the test tomorrow. Oh, yeah. And now, it's not that big of a deal, but if I just say second calc value, I can put in 34.6, and it'll tell me 57,000, 58, 34. Sorry, say again. How do you put in 34.6? So I hit second trace, you get to count. Second trace, you get to count. And then value. And now you can put in any value of x that's on the screen. 34.6. Bam. If you change it to decimals when you put it in your list, then you have created an equation that requires decimals. I didn't. So I created an equation that can actually take percentages. Just like I said in the homework, if you make uh, an equation based off of whole years, 1989, then if they say predict it for 1996, you better put 1996 in your equation. If you put 89, 90, 91, now you can just put 96. You're defining what your inputs look like when you set up your lists. So mine is just the whole number, 34.6. Would you play the job before you? I don't know. Take this. Put this here. I like it. Yes. What? Yes. amount of money anywhere? No. Is that an actual amount of money somewhere? Somewhere. No, it's not. That is my predicted amount of money for a state with 34.6% of its population. So look at Virginia that I used to live in. I know, that's so no. I don't know if anybody likes Virginia, but thank God about it. <laughs> so we predict 57,000 median salary and they actually make 55,000. That's not that far off. Why is it kind of a little bit far off? Because our R was only 0.8. So the prediction is not perfect, but it's definitely better than taking just the average of all of them. It improved that estimate. Okay, so you guys get that. So I'm going to ask you exactly questions like this. 
exactly like this, right? And especially the last question. This is might be the most important question on here. In terms of comparing, <coughs> yeah. Oh, what, uh, so compare to Virginia. So why did I say compare to Virginia? Because they are a state that actually has 34.6 percent with a bachelor. What did I predict they should make salary-wise? 57,000. 57, and they actually made? 50. Ah, so then you would say they make less than I predicted or something like that? That's it. And again, another reason why that's true is, is bachelor degree percentages the only thing that could explain differences in salary? No. no. So Virginia, for some reason, there's other factors that bring that number down. There can be some states that make higher than that, some states that make lower, and they have their own variables beyond bachelor degrees. And they have a high bachelor's degree. Maybe, maybe, maybe. The weakness of this kind of thing is you can only check one variable against one other variable at a time. That's all it can do. There are tests you would learn in like a Stats 2 class that could do multi-variable against each other at the same time. Okay. So this last question. This is definitely related to the whole basketball makes you taller kind of thing. Do results mean that if you get more people in a state to earn a bachelor's degree, then the median income will, will increase? Yes. It looks like it again. Oh, hell no. Oh. That's not what it means. Maybe. It kind of makes sense that it would, right? Yeah. But it, the, the test itself can't say that. This is not a test of effects. This is a test of they seem to be related. We don't know why, we don't know how related, we don't know if there's something else that makes them both change at the same time. We don't know. It does now on the surface of it, it's like, well, it kind of makes sense that would happen, but it's no guarantee. Right? If you just go in and start, you know, forcing people to get bachelor's degrees, or unfortunately, like happening now, weaken bachelor's degrees to the point where more people can get them. Does that mean that income will rise? No. No! Shit! Right? So especially if you start thinking about the ways you might increase degree earnings, <coughs> is that necessarily going to make the median income of a state rise? No. Hell no. Okay. There's so many things I could go on rants about, but I, I try not to do that to you. All right. Uh, does that make sense with that kind of question? That kind of question is always going to have the same answer. It's not yes. It's not no. It's neither one of those. It's we have no freaking idea. Do your results mean? <laughs> no. We have no idea. What will happen? And and why or why not? Because correlation does not imply causation. Now there are people, there are people, uh, fellow stats people, like decrying the use of that little phrase. But you have to understand, it does not imply causation. Neither does it not in, not not imply. I mean, we don't know. Is really what's happening. It's sort of a introductory analysis, and then you go deeper. Then you could do effect studies. So yes. Hello. Uh, with that in mind, what's your opinion on the educational research that you're doing? Don't don't get me started. Please don't get me started. There are things within our own district where they say, we'll take data, we'll analyze data, and I'm like, you're not going to take the right data. So, so often they're like, look at this great data, and, and then, did you take the right data? Are you looking at the right effects? And don't get me started, because you guys would go to sleep if I started going off. Yes. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. This study says there might be a uh, cause and effect relationship, but this is not the right study to verify that. This is a good study to start and go, okay, there's a reason to go look for a cause and effect. And I can set up that, because that study should make sense that that would be a much harder study to set up. This is a nice, easy, just snapshot study. I can do real quick. See if there's even a reason to go further. Yeah. Yes? And correlation? Every correlation study. Now, please understand, there are studies that are not just correlation studies. They are effect, cause and effect studies. 
But I've heard in the news over the last year, I've heard it several times, the idea of this correlates with that, and then they start talking as if one causes the other, and people don't understand it well enough to stop and go, you don't know that, wait a minute. There's so much shit that's being spewed that nobody understands well enough to go, wait, I can't trust that. You know, and it's just, it just makes me sad a little bit. Yes? So, with science, it seems like a collective I mean, if you can control the experiment much better than you can find causation, and you can eliminate all those variables, how do you do it with stuff like the like certain... No, see, that's what I'm saying. This kind of study would be, and sometimes there's ethical concerns, obviously. You're like, what's the effects of... Uh, malnourishment on future education. And how do you set up an effect study? Well, this set of kids, we won't give them enough food. Uh, wait, <laughs> right? So there's there are things that will never really be able to set up a truly full cause and effect study. We just can't, because they, they would be unethical. But you can get enough data to get a better feel for what, if there is. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Okay, okay. So, but, uh, a lot of what I just discussed was beyond what you have to worry about. You, 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 you really just have to worry about what is on this sheet. I do tend to go off script, and that's what teachers are supposed to do, is be an addition to the book, not a walking, talking book. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's, now let's do the last chapter, and then I think we'll take a little break, and then we'll get into final review. Um, Alright. I think I did it right. I'm gonna do a remarkably truncated lecture on this. It's important you guys understand that chi square exists. Uh, and it really depends on what uh, what occupation or, or what career you're gonna go into as to how much you're gonna use it or not. I just want you to know they exist. Uh, so there is a lot more to it than what we're about to talk about. What is it mostly used for? What, what branch of like science is mostly Oh my God! Uh, let me let me show you what I what I found real quick here. Um, the question is kind of weird because it's basically anything you can do with statistical analysis. Yeah, you get away from grades. I was trying to find. It. Where am I at? <laughs> this is uh, this is chi squared. Chi squared. Chi chi. Well, chi squared. So chi squared. Chi is a Greek letter. It looks like this. This is chi. Chi. This is the symbol. What's being squared? Nothing. This is the symbol chi squared. Agree with me? If you square root it, it doesn't make the square go away. That's just that doesn't make any sense. Okay, I like it, I like it. Uh, so this study, now watch, watch, watch. Cumin, uh, uh, anybody Indian food? I love putting cumin in a, a lot of different stuff. Mm -hmm. And this study actually uh, studied, I, I love this, some of you guys are getting a kick out of the thing. Uh, this study studied the relationship between uh, that spice and, uh, let me see what I was about. Oh my god, this is the... Uh, there we go. memory and new in the find out. Alright. You have to go to the, the layman site to, to interpret the freaking title of this thing. Um, Alright, I want to point this out. Turn around. I want you guys to see. This is stuff that we, we've done. So this is the new shit today. Chi-square stats for categorical measures. So one thing we're going to do is, uh, I think on the practice final, there's a A, B, C, D, e, F, expected grades and observed grades. So that's categorical data. Category of grade A, category of grade B. So chi-square is used for categorical measures and t-tests for continuous measures. Hey, we're used to that shit, t-tests. 
because they got a bunch of samples, they got a bunch of S's, they're going to have to use T-scores, get p-values. So some p-values in this is related to the chi-square, and some p-values are related to their t-tests. So if you look through this whole thing, and I'm not going to make you look through the whole thing, but quickly. Here, look at all this. Just p-values running all around. Look, this is interesting. This is actually with the spice, p is 0 0.002, right? That's, that's uh, oh, it's probably related to mood. I can't, I don't know the, the terms they're using, but what does P of 0 .002 mean? That means that that's, a, that's evidence for something. In this case, it would be evidence for an effect between the two. Evidence that one does affect the other one. So the, the null would have been no effect. It, it stays the same. The mean is the same as it would have been. And the alternate would be it's different. So that P of 0 .002 is evidence that it does change. And look at the placebo. Look at the P for that, point frickin' eight. That's huge. That means shit. Screw that. That's not evidence for any damn thing. So at least I'm hoping most of you guys are now able to, if you, if you had to or if you were interested, you could actually look at an article now and understand very quickly just by P values what they mean. So the spice stuff does have an effect, but the placebo didn't. And you can look through the rest of the p-values and so forth. You, you with me? There's no alpha shit up there, is there? Because alpha is up to the reader. What's your own personal required level to show evidence for something? So they just give p-values. I love it. I'm hoping. Okay. All right, all right, all right. So, what does chi-square look like? It's not going to look like a normal curve most of the time. In fact, for us, it's never going to look like a normal curve. I sometimes call it the job of the hut curve because what a chi-square looks like normally is something like this. And this is a hard wall here. This. This wall here means zero, and you can't go below that. So this is different from a normal curve. And, and, and this doesn't have anything to do with what we're going to do with this stuff. But just real quick, if I did take a normal curve and I fold it on itself, and that, this would be for degree of freedom of, uh, of one, you end up with the chi-square. It looks different for very small samples. But then when you get larger samples, it doesn't quite follow that same kind of idea. But anyway. So... Um, for z scores, they're, they're, I don't know if you guys remember. I think I showed you the formula for this shape, and it was some real ass e to the negative, uh, basically uh, x minus the mean square over blah blah blah. Right. So it's it was some ugly exponential thing. That was a definition for this. Are you with me? I really want you guys to bring with me. Okay. There's a function that if you graph it in your calculator, it'll look like this. We never used this, did we? <coughs> How did we use the z-score chart? We calculated z-scores and saw where they fell. So there is a function that describes the shape of the thing. So it exists on its own, but how could we use it? Well, we can make z-scores. And what's one way to make a z-score? Like this. What's another way to make a z-score? Like this. Right, and there's other ways to make z-scores, but they all relate to this picture. So, Chi-square scores have their own formulas, too. One of them that we're actually going to end up uh, not using, just so I show you, is, uh, <coughs> let's see if I remember it now. That's the real, true heart of, of a chi-square. It, it, we're not going to do this, which is unfortunate, but it's okay. I'm going to let go. You just don't have time. You could do... You could do confidence intervals for, for uh, standard deviations. You could do hypothesis tests for standard deviations. Why couldn't I use this picture to do all that? Because what do I need to know in order to have a z-score? Standard deviation. So if I'm doing a confidence interval or a hypothesis test, I am saying, I, I don't know. And, and what's it, what, how, how is a standard deviation spread out? How does it look if you plot all the possible? It looks like this. Looks like Jabba the Hutt. 
So one thing we're not going to have time for is to do confidence intervals and hypothesis tests for standard deviations. And some of you guys are like, I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. I understand. A little piece of me dies, but sorry. Cool. The one we're going to do, which is the one that's a little bit easier to handle. Oh, shit. Now I forget which way this book does this. Uh, I think the observed by So we've got to talk about this, but I just want to show you just like z scores have different formulas, chi squared have different formulas also. They all relate to the same picture. It's just a different way to calculate things based on what situation I'm in. We don't know what the shit this stuff means yet. That's the formula. All right, so let's look at the example on the uh, side two, I think, of the handout I gave you. Oh, sure. Fine. Help us. Everybody got that side two of the the one with the um, the, the money and the bachelor's degrees. Okay. Okay. <coughs> so here's what O and E represent. How many categories are here? Six. Six. Six categories. So my degrees of freedom would be 6 minus 1, 5. Degrees of freedom for this kind of test is based on the number of categories, not like the number of M&Ms total or something. So that's, that's the one thing that's definitely a little different. That's the one big mistake people make is they think the degrees of freedom is 41 because there's 42 okay. M&Ms. But no, it's not. Okay. So this test, let me, let's see if we understand the idea of just the test. We don't have to understand the chi-square or anything yet. Uh, we take a bag of M&Ms, and we expect, we sort of have this expectation maybe, if you eat a lot of M&Ms, you know this is wrong, but you expect maybe that there's this equal number of each color. Or you want to test to see if that's true. Are there an equal number of each color, right? I don't know, any of you guys remember my sister and I, like, getting bags of M&M's and I'd give her all my brown ones and she'd give me all her green ones or whatever. Because she didn't, you know, green is icky. Okay, I'll take them. Holy shit. Um, so the idea of this test is if I did have 42 M&M's and I expect there to be equal numbers amongst all the colors, how many of each color would I have then if there's six of them? Seven. Seven. 42 M&M's. So one way we could do this test is to have a uniform distribution. We think that they should be uniformly distributed. So there's 42 distributed among six categories. It should be seven. So see that expected column? That's how many we expect. And then next to that, we can put how many we actually observe. So we open a bag, 42 M&Ms, and we see five brown and so forth. How are we doing so far? So now watch, this is really kind of beautiful. On this uh, Java picture here, and if you're not a Star Wars fan, it's too bad. On the Java picture, this, if I get chi squared equals zero, what's the only way to get zero here? Is if the observed, so what's the only way observed minus expected could be zero is if they are always equal to each other. And think about that for a second. If the observed exactly matched the expected, that should be really good evidence that, yeah, it does follow that uniform. It's not enough evidence to say that it doesn't. So that's kind of silly to say, I know, but oh well. We never accept the null anyway. So if I think, if the null is, yes, that does follow that expected value, the, that expected um, distribution. And it does exactly in my sample. It's 7, 7 all the way down. If that was true, chi-square would be 0. So evidence that it doesn't follow that pattern means I have to be so far away from there that the differences are so big that it's evidence that it doesn't follow that expected pattern. That's the idea. So I'm kind of, for the test we're going to do, it's called the goodness of fit test. How good does the observations fit the expectations. Goodness of fit. So I see, it kind of makes sense, I see how different what I expected is from what I observed. This is just to kind of normalize them, and that's my calculated chi-square score. 
sort of like calculating z star. This is related to z star. What's the formula for this? That. Did I do it all over eight? I always do that. Mm -hmm. Boom. One big ass summation symbol. I was about to say. I always do that no matter what. Um, the only thing we have left to talk about then is how the hell do I get this? So this is just like my Z star. It does the same thing. It's my sample data and how far away it was from zero in this case. Right? And zero means that they would be exactly the same. So the further I get away from zero, the more evidence it is that they're not the same. So that's what I calculate. That's like my Z star. This would be like my rejection region. So in this case, this saying I had to be 11.071 and we only got 3.143. We only got that far away when we were supposed to get this far away. So did we find evidence that they are different? Did we make it far enough away? So this is ours. This is like Z star. In fact, I think I call it chi square star. Like it's a little crazy. That's like Z star. And how far did we have to be? We're, we had to be at least this far away. So for this one that's already done for you, I calculated 3.143. I was supposed to be this far away. Nope, I didn't find enough evidence. That's not far enough away from zero to say that, no, the M&Ms are not always uniformly distributed. I haven't found evidence to say that. Let all that sink in. You guys are like, oh, I'm so happy. Now do you understand why I did the correlation stuff yesterday? Because it's not as intense. Yes? On the formula, you're just putting the, the O minus B squared, like the point you want to over E. Yeah, so I get a whole column of observed minus expected squared divided by E. I get all those, and then I add all of those up. So that's why this sum is one big ass sum in front. I gotta calculate all of these separately and then I add them all up. So that's 3.143. That's like my Z star. That's how far my sample got. So my sample is definitely different from the expectation, but is it different enough? Just like a normal hypothesis test. If I felt like the gas price was 319, my sample was 320. That's different, but it's not different enough. Holy shit, it's pretty close. The whole idea of it's got to be different enough. That's captured right here. It's got to be so far away that it's evidence that the whole thing is different. So let's do number two together. This is a different idea. This one's all about blood cholesterol level. This is what the general population follows. not good for us here. I can't remember if I based this on real stuff or if I just made this shit up. So. It looks like real. Unfortunately, it looks like it's, it looks like, it might be real. Um, if you don't know your cholesterol level, uh, then you have no idea what the hell this stuff means, but this is not the best. You can chew it. We find a group of 500 people living in a secluded area. So they're still in the general population, but they're kind of like off on their own, and they eat a certain diet. And then I give you the, the observed value. So, so in the observed column, what am I going to put for less than 130? What am I going to put right here? 120 over 500? Yeah, 120 have a level below 130. And then 130 wow. to 200. Mm -hmm. 240. 200 to 240. 100. And mm -hmm. then the rest have a level above 240. So that's mm -hmm. 500 people minus, oh, Jeff, why did you do this to yourself? 40? Yeah. 460, so there's 40 out of 500 that goes in the last spot. That's the observed. Now the question is... Why don't you do 120 divided by 500? Because it's not, uh, it's not a rate, it's an actual number observed. Because I'm going to compare it to the number I expect. Now, I understand what you're saying. So, they it's would sort of, uh, the, the problem is it doesn't really follow this shape if you do what you're thinking about. You want to compare the rates. We have to compare the, the numbers. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
So what do I put, how do I figure out what goes here? There's 500 people, what percentage do I expect to be less than 130? 20. So 20% of 500. Wow, that's confusing. 100. 100. Everybody see that? So you can either have a problem like the first example where we think that they're all the same. So then you just take the total divided by the number of categories to see how much goes in each. Does that make sense? That's the uniform distribution. If I have eight categories and 80 things and I think they all have the same, well then they would all have 10 things. 80 divided by eight. Here, this is the other way to do it. I think they each have a certain percentage. So whatever the total is, you just take the percentage of that to see what the expected amount is. So I expect 100 people to have less than 130. I expect 30% of 500 to have in there, 150. I expect 35% 500. Who is it? 175. And then I expect 15% of, of 500? 75. 75. And just to make sure we're on the right track, you, you should both add it to be 500 total, because I have 500 total people. We know that one does. 1, 2, 3, 425, 500. Yay. The only reason I do that, the only reason I add those is just to make sure I didn't make a mistake. That matter. There's 500 people. They better be 500 people. Are those always going to be whole numbers you put there? No. Which is fine, because this average number, expected value is average. So there could be decimals there. It doesn't mean that there's 0.2 of a person. And now the rest of it, you can imagine you can do L1, L2, L3, L4 if you want to. You can use your lists. Or you can just do them each one at a time. So here this would be 20 squared, 400. Is that cool? The difference is 20 squared is 400. The difference here is 90 squared, 100. The difference here is 75 squared, I don't know. Who is it? 5625. 56, 55. Yeah. And then this would be 35 squared. 1225. No reason in the world to add those up ever. There's no reason. It's not going to tell you shit. It's just an intermediate step. And again, this is. Uh, I'm not sure how to say it. But. It, it, this feels a little bit like the stuff we've done before. This is definitely a very different type of equation, though, but it's very analogous to creating a z-score. The big difference here is that zero is kind of like a hard wall. It can chi-square be negative? No. Which is not the reason, but it's kind of nice that there's a square on it that should kind of remind us it can't go negative. It is created from squared stuff. Uh, and then I just divide each one of these by it by its e. So 400 divided by 100, four. 8100 divided by 150. 54. Who is it? 54. 54. <coughs> Nita. What about? Uh uh. 32.14. 32.14. Yeah. Woo! Uh, Woo! Let's see. Uh, yep. 32.14. <laughs> Well, 25 divided by 75? 16.33. And if I add these, that's my chi-square, my chi-square star, if you want to call it that. That's my calculated thing. What are you going to get? 106.47. Now, now, we're still at the same point we were up here. How the hell did I get that number? Well, obviously, I used, hopefully it's obvious. I used a, a chart. Shit. Just like the yeah, ZNT. So bring your own for the test. Yeah, just look at it that way. This is the last table you get from me. Thank you, Lord. Shink, 
Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm worried that I created like enough to see. The frick is a critical value. Oh, 0.99. So it's 0.115, right? Four. Three degrees of freedom. Yeah, just three degrees of freedom. I'll figure it out. No. Why are you mark my paper? Now it's ugly. So the, the most evil thing, I don't know if you picked up on the most evil thing about this, is that our z-score charts are always to the left. This is area to the right. Just because we want to mess you up. I don't know, to be honest. This is a crappy copy chart. But so we have found a way to reject the claim. Uh, so let's see if we can recover that 11.07. From the handout, let's see if we can do that one. What was the degrees of freedom on that first M and N problem? Five. five. And minus one. So it was five. And what was alpha up there? 0. 0.05, which means 0. 0.05 to the right, so that's kind of nice. That would be in the tail, right? I'm way out here in the tail is 0. 0.05. So area to the right would be 0. 0.05. Degrees of freedom 5, there's the 11.071 right there, you see it? That's how I got that. Now, the problem we're working on now, what's the degrees of freedom? Three. Three. And the alpha is? 0 0.01. There. 11.345? Yes. Cool. All right, so degrees of freedom of three. Well, it's the same, right? What's that? So I know degrees of freedom is three, but I'm saying, what do you get Adding these up if you want to draw it out. Add these up. That's our chi square. In, in here, we do. How do I get four? Just divided by E. Why each of them are eating and then add them up. That's why it's a big. So get those and then add a parent and get right. So let me see. We'll go back. Alright. So what's going on here is this guy. This guy here tells me on my Java. I gotta be, what did we just say? 11 points, three, four, five. That's like my rejection region. Where did we make it? All over there. All uh, the way, 106. Yeah, <laughs> over there. Right, we made it to 106.47. So that is very, very good evidence that what, shit, the no for this is always that it does follow the expected pattern. That's the null. That makes sense. The null is it's equal to what we thought. That is evidence that it isn't, that it's different. In fact, if we look at the specific numbers, not only is it, it doesn't follow what we thought it should, 
but their cholesterol overall is better. It's lower. So what do you think is going to be on the news? We're going to look at their diet. We're going to make up a new diet for you to follow when really we've only looked at the diet, to be honest. There might be other things happening there, but if they have a very different diet and they have cholesterol levels like this, we might say, well, what the hell are they eating? And more importantly, the problem with what we did with the Mediterranean diet is we said, oh, they eat olive oil. So we ate all the same shit we were, and we just put olive oil on it. Right? Or most of us did anyway. That is not going to do anything for us. So really, it's like, what are they not eating? And then you're like, but I love my cheesy poops. I'm going to keep eating my cheesy poops. And then too bad for you. You just have to put up with the higher cholesterol. Uh, okay. I noticed most of you don't know about the olive oil thing. Everybody thought olive oil was the savior. Because that's what a lot of people eat. But it had more to do with what they didn't eat. And we just didn't focus on that because we didn't want to give up our cheesy poops and our red steak. Yes? I love red steak. What is it, sorry? So this, I basically do my my formula is the sum of these. So what's the sum of these? So that's my pi square star. That's our calculated sample chi square. Yeah, so the conclusion would be something along the lines of, it doesn't have to be anything too formal. If you want to be a little formal, you say we found evidence. That means cholesterol levels. Don't. The general population. I'm not going to be as picky as long as you get the idea that, or you could say we found evidence that their cholesterol levels are different from what we thought. Anything that captures that idea, I'll be fine with it. Yeah, if we would have gotten, uh, like at that right there, the purple circle number was, uh, we got 